Hey guys, in this video we're going to go over the chess schools rating comparisons on the website. So the first part of this video we're going to get into a little bit of the statistics behind how we create the comparisons. And then in the second part of the video I'll kind of go over the tables and explain how they work. And I'll put a timestamp in the description below so that if you want you can just jump right to the rating table part if you want to skip over the, the stats. Okay, so this is a really common question we get. At chess goals, how do the different ratings compare? A lot of players say, I only have a Lee chess rating, or I only have a chess.com rating. How does that approximately compare to the other site, or to USCF, or to FIDE? Um, so what we've done over the years is we've put together multiple surveys, multiple data sources, and we've created a database of over 10,000 linked usernames to match up the different rating systems among players in both pools. So the first thing we do is we download the data for all the different sources and, and update everything. So I download the uh, most recent rating supplement for USCF and FIDE and then Jesse who I work with for Chess Goals he downloads the Chess.com and Lee Chess ratings using API data and that's kind of where we start with. So we have four different sets of ratings, USCF, FIDE, Chess.com, and Lee Chess. And in this article, I kind of go over an example just explaining Chess.com and USCF, and it's very similar for the other comparisons that we do. So the first thing I do is I take those full sets of players, so like the blue circles, Chess.com players, the pink is USCF, and I find which players are playing in both sets. So I only want to look at this comparison set of players. I only want the players that are playing both Chess.com and USCF. And in this case, it's probably going to be Chess.com Blitz for this first example. And then what we want to do is make sure that these ratings are um, as current as possible and that these are active players. So we, what we do is we look for recent non-provisional players. And the way we do this, for the over-the-board ratings, we only use the most recent rating supplements. So that does uh, shrink down the number of participants in this comparison, but every one of our comparisons with this most recent update was over 1,000 players, even on the clean recent sets. And the Chess.com to USCF comparison started out around 11,000 players, and when we got to the clean set, it was still over 5,000 players. So these are massive sets of players, and I feel like at this point, adding more players doesn't even help the accuracy of the comparisons because of how much variance there is, as we'll see. Okay, so for the, for the online sites, the players have to have an RD value less than 150. RD stands for rating deviation. So an RD less than 150 means that you're a fairly active player. Um, RD values are explained a little bit more in my chess ratings post, so I won't go too much into it here. But these are uh, players that are currently playing those categories. So you have to be a current over the board player and a current player in that online category. The next thing we do is we look for any obvious outliers. So we don't go in and overclean the data, but we do look for errors in our sources. So if uh, a link doesn't seem to be correct, I'll go look it up. Or if a rating difference is just way too large, for example, here we're looking at a 1250 and a 3000, you know, that one we can be pretty confident is an outlier, some sort of mistake in the data without even digging too deep into it. So we do some data cleaning here in this step, trying to check for outliers. Now, the next thing we do, and this is something that has changed over the years since I've worked with the chess goals data is we rank the data. So we're using non-parametric statistics now. In the past, what we've done, and you'll see this um, in some of the older rating comparisons, if you go back to my chess.com blog, is we've tried to just fit either a linear line or a polynomial line to the data, and it can do a pretty good job. So for example, USCF blitz, or I'm sorry, USCF ratings and chess.com blitz, linear regression does a fairly good job until you get to the upper end, the highest ratings, that's where you start to see, you know, a player like Hikaru can separate a lot more from, uh, for example, a national master. So there's more separation at the upper ends. But I'm not completely happy with how the linear regression models look. 
and I'm not completely happy with how you know second order or other polynomial models look. And the reason for that is because these are different rating systems, um, it doesn't do a great job picking up where players tend to bunch together and where players tend to spread out. And sometimes distributions are just very wavy and we can't reflect that easily by trying to draw a straight line across the data. So straight lines can work well within one site, chess.com bliss versus bullet, maybe with USCF, but when you get into FIDE or like chess.com rapid versus USCF, the, the rank data works quite a bit better. So here's an example of how the rank data works. Let's say we have three players in the clean set here. We have their chess.com blitz ratings and their USCF ratings. What we do is we rank the blitz ratings and then we separately rank the USCF ratings. So we have these two pools of players that we think are the cleanest set we can reasonably make. We rank both of those sets independently and then we map them. And what this gives us is a nice set of players that show, okay, among this pool, if your uh, blitz rating is X, what's your USCF rating? And then what I do is I add a standard deviation measure here, which you see in the plus minus. So what this means is if your blitz rating is 1100, we expect your USCF rating to be on average 960 but we know within one standard deviation of 260. And if you look up a normal distribution curve, our rank data follows pretty closely to normal distributions. That means 68% of the time, if you're an 1100 Blitz player who actively also plays USCF, your rating falls between 700 and 960 plus 260. So there's a, a 520 point range that we expect your rating to fall in only 68% of the time. So that can show you how much noise is in the data. And that's a really important thing to realize because when you look at the uh, map data, it's just not a perfect correlation. I can't tell you exactly what your USCF rating is based on your chess.com blitz. All we can do is say, based on our data, this is our best guess, and give you a range so that you kind of know what to expect. Um, so here's a curve showing or a histogram showing the difference between the predicted USCF ratings and the actual. I haven't refreshed this with the most recent data but it really does a nice job highlighting how it looks like a bell curve. So most players are close, right? Within 100 points you see the highest bars so that means these are occurring more often but you do see quite a few players out here you know, that could be three, four hundred points different between the two systems. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. So a lot of the complaints that the rating comparisons get, I think um, it's more about like understanding how the data is made and how the data is created and what the data is telling us. So we aren't saying that your rating should be Y based on X. What we're saying is in our data, with the large pools of players, this is what we see in the data. Um, so it doesn't matter like if some players don't try as hard online versus USCF or you know these different things. Like there's a lot of factors that go into the data. We're just doing our best to show you how it works. So now let's go look at the rating tables themselves. So on the Chess Goals website, this is under Free Resources, Rating Comparison. And let's look at the first table. So these were just updated within the last few days, March 28th, 2021. So here's how to use the table. If your chess, this first table is chess.com rating, FIDE, and USCF. If your chess.com blitz rating is 1200, the average bullet rating is 11.30 on chess.com, chess.com rapid 13.30, USCF 11.15, and for this most recent set we didn't have lower many lower FIDE ratings so I just blank those out until we get more over the board events again and more data. But now let's say you wanted to compare your blitz and bullet. So a blitz rating of 1200 compares to on average a bullet rating of 1, 11.30. 
that's plus or minus 180, right? So that's, again, a pretty wide range of what to expect the bullet rating to fall into if you're active in both pools, and that's 68% of the time. So that's what uh, I really want people to keep in mind. These are very wide ranges, and this is just to give you a general idea of how the different ratings compare. So now let's look at some of the higher ratings. Uh, 1500 blitz on chess.com is about 1425 bullet, 1580 rapid, 1470 USCF, and 1535 FIDE. So one thing I do like about the chess.com rating system is you can see they're pretty consistent across the board. You know, a lot of players weren't a big fan of when they added 150 points to all bullet ratings. But there was a good statistical reason behind that if you think of a rating meaning a certain skill level. So if you think of a 1500 as being a certain level player, chess.com bullet ratings now are closer to that, what you would expect. And uh, chess.com is also pretty close to over the board ratings, which I like. And it's been that way for the last few years, uh, pretty much ever since I've been tracking. And I know chess.com does keep an eye on this as well. They don't want to allow too much inflation or deflation into their rating pools. So then as we go up the ratings, uh, 2000 blitz on chess.com, in the 1900s, bullet rapid, in the 1900s, over the board. And you can see it stays pretty consistent, even up to 2300. But then as you get to the higher ratings, uh, 2700 blitz is 2700 bullet, but then we see these top players don't play a lot of rapid, so the rapid ratings don't get up as high. And there's also more separation. So a lot of the international masters, grandmasters can create more separation in Blitz and Bullet than they're able to create in USCF and FIDE. So we see that here in this table. Okay, so now let's look at Lee Chess versus Chess.com. Here's Chess.com Blitz in the first column. And then we have Lee Chess Blitz, Bullet, Rapid, and Classical. So all of these ratings are mapped to the first column. And that's the same thing in all of in um, the first table as well as this table. So if your chess.com blitz is 1100, that's approximately 1365 Lee chess blitz on average, plus or minus 120. So it's a fairly narrow band, um, one of the narrowest bands that you'll see on this page. So that means 68% of the time, you're ab above or below this level by 120 points. And the bullet rating, 1235. Rapid rating, quite a bit higher. Classical, quite a bit higher. And what you'll find is when you compare on both sites, the rapid ratings to the faster ratings, the distribution is kind of flat. So there's just less players in the rapid and classical pools. And for whatever reason, they don't spread out as much as you see in Blitz and Bullet. There's less separation there. And a lot of players are interested, well, what's the difference between chess.com and lead chess? So you can see here, it'll bounce around a bit because we're using the non-parametric statistics. But at this, at the 900 level, we're seeing almost a 300 point difference. At the 1400 level, it's about a 265 point difference. Here we see 235, here we see 215, here we see 185, and I've seen multiple players confirm this is true as well. So what tends to happen is when players first start out on the two sites, Lee Chess is about 300 points higher. But as the ratings increase, you'll find that the Lee Chess and Chess.com ratings start to get closer and closer. Two hundred, they actually converge. Yeah, so twenty-two hundred, they're about the same, and then above that, Chess.com might even get a little bit higher than Lee Chess, comparing Blitz. And then the third table we have here, I won't uh, explain this whole table again, but this is Lee Chess ratings and over the board ratings, and there are FIDE ratings here if you click the next button and go higher. And the way I created these was I actually mapped these still to chess.com blitz because um, that was our largest category by far in terms of number of user IDs. So um, historically, I've just done it this way. You don't have the plus or minus values here. 
because of how it's mapped. But you can kind of keep in mind similar values. You know, somewhere around 150 points plus or minus is about what to expect. Okay, so that's a little summary of our chess goals rating comparisons. I hope that helps explain how the, the comparisons work. Um, on the website, there is a contact us link at the bottom of the page. You can feel free to contact me anytime with questions about the ratings. I love talking chess statistics, ratings, numbers, anything like that. Um, I have a background in statistics, and this is really a hobby of mine, chess improvement. And just one of the things we look at is how to measure improvement, which is comparing these different rating systems. Um, so I guess that's all I have for the video. If you like this video, please click the thumbs up button. And if you're interested in chess improvement videos in general, that's what we focus on on the YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe to the channel. And thank you for watching.